this week's Do Something With Your Marketing, I want to encourage you to question your data biases. Now, a lot of the times as marketers, we get data from a vendor or a service or a download or something, and we assume, yep, that's the data, uh, and we can start working with it. And we don't ever question what kinds of biases are in this data, what kinds of things that might take us by surprise or lead us down an incorrect path. And so today, I want to show you a couple of examples of how you might find biases in your data. First, we need to know what is representative. What is a representative population? A representative population is any data set which accurately represents the <clears throat> total population that we're studying. So for example, in the United States, the US Census Bureau uh, has the, probably the best data or certainly the, the, the gold standard of data about the number of people in the United States and characteristics about them. Now, let's take a look then at a couple of social networks and see how their data compares to see is there a bias of some kind. So here I'm at data.census.gov and I'm going to dig into uh, the United States population overall. Now what we see here is we see total male population 49.2%, female population 58.8%, and we start seeing these nice breakouts, 25 to 34, there's about uh, 43 million people there. 43.4, 40.5 million people between the ages 35 and 44, and so on and so forth. So we have a really good sense of who is the United States. Now let's go to Facebook. Facebook has its audience insights, and I'm going to go ahead and just going to clear out everything here, make sure that we are dealing with the total population of the United States with no other filters. Now let's do a little bit of testing. 25 to 34, I'm going to specify all people all 25 to 34 Facebook says that is an audience of 50 to 60 million people in the United States well 25 to 34 is 43.4 million according to the US Census Bureau so Facebook is overstating this population bracket by a considerable amount um, 43 million is very different from 50 million or f certainly 60 million so there's something askew in Facebook's data there. Let's go ahead and reset now to uh, 18 to 65, to 65 plus, and get back to our overall population. Here, Facebook is saying 54% women, 46% men uh, for the United States. We know, again, now this is total population uh, of all ages, and Facebook data excludes everything under the age of 18. But even still, to say that it's you know 49.2 and 50.8, and then to be 54, 46, Eh, something's not quite right there. So either Facebook's data is flawed, which is possible, or Facebook's audience is not necessarily representative of the population as a whole. So if we're making decisions with Facebook Audience Insights, which is a useful tool as long as you understand the biases, <clears throat> we know there could be issues with age, there could be issues with uh, demographics, there could be issues with things like income level. So let's take a quick look here uh, at some of the other demographics of this population. Under the advanced menu here, I'm going to start looking at things like who are these people in terms of market segments, so, uh, interesting data points about them, education, work, things like that, because these are all data points that we can then go and correlate with, again, the, the data that we know about uh, the, from the U.S. Census Bureau. So if you are studying something and you're using Facebook data, you'll want to take the time to match it back to the U.S. Uh, popula Census Bureau population surveys to see just how far off something like Facebook might be. If we go to Twitter audience insights, for example, Twitter says, hey, in household income of all Twitter users, 17% of Twitter users are 75,000 to, to 99.99 within the country of the United States. Well, let's try taking a look here at household income. And now we see 75 to 999 is 12.2% of the United States population. So Twitter's audience here is skewing significantly higher in terms of household income than the general population, which means that if we're making decisions using Twitter data, mm, we might need to take that into account. Is there a substantial difference between who is on Twitter and the overall US population? Does it, it may not accurately reflect everybody in the United States. Now that's sort of one step to, to bias detection. The second step is to then start looking at our audiences to see how they compare. So if you were to take your Facebook page, uh, for example, and say, let's I want, who's connected to my Facebook page? What do we know about this population? 
you know, this is a very different looking population now, that even than just Facebook's population. So we not only do we have the slight skew from the Census Bureau data, but we now we have a skew even from Facebook's data. My population, for example, of people who are connected to my page skews much more uh, towards the older audience. You know, I see almost no one 18 to 24 and no one in the 65 plus. Um, and, but I do see you know, a substantially overrepresented here, 45 to 54 for both females and males, and then more overrepresented male than female here. What do we do with this information? Well, again, it goes back to understanding those biases. That's important. But then using this data to get a better understanding of how our population skews differently from uh, the general public. What are the th things that people like, for example, who are connected to me versus what are the things that the general population likes? So if I take away my page, suddenly you know, the general population loves things like Groupon and Pepsi and, and the major brands far more than the, the people who are connected to my page. So if I'm trying to figure out messaging, if I'm trying to figure out calendaring, content marketing, social media, even you know what content to put up, I should be checking into, into the population I'm working with and the general population to understand who I'm reaching and more importantly, who am I not reaching? What audiences am I neglecting? Am I not getting access to? And should I be creating content for the things that those people like? So social media, we have fast food restaurants, travel, pr different perspectives, Olive Garden. <laughs> I mean, there's all this stuff in here that's not part of my audience. And so if I want to serve the audience I've already been serving, I, could, I can certainly focus on those things. If I want to serve a new audience or attract a new audience, I might have to change what I say, how I say, how I craft my content to appeal to it. The same is true, obviously, with audience insights on Twitter. I could put in my followers, for example, and look to see how are the how are these people different, right? There's they are less uh, in the seventy-five to ninety uh, to hundred thousand dollar income. They seem to really, really like the weather and science news. So again, these are things that I would use to inform my content strategy about my audience, understanding that my audience is not representative of the overall audience. This sort of data and these sort of insights are useful for uh, marketers, especially when you are trying to talk to people in the executive suite who have baked in assumptions about who the audience is. If you can demonstrate through tools like this, through your own Google Analytics, through survey data that you're running, and of course, the, all the government data that your tax dollars have already paid for, uh, you can say, nope, this is actually who our audience is, and this is the opportunity that we are missing, uh, the audience that we're not getting a hold of. So that's a way to, to be able to, to help explain and justify new marketing programs, new initiatives, new content, things like that. So that's what I want you to do with your marketing this week is look at the data, look at the data you work with, what are the biases in it, do you know about them? Are you accounting for them? And then how are you using that to differentiate the content you're creating or the, the marketing you're doing uh, to reach your audience today versus the audience you could be reaching that you're not currently right now? So go and do that with your marketing. Thanks for watching. As always, subscribe to the YouTube channel and to the uh, newsletter, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. If you want help with your company's data and analytics, visit BrainTrustInsights.com today and let us know how we can help you.